Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Tim Moore from Furuno, and today we're down here in beautiful Orange Beach, Alabama, with new sea lion owner, Justin Ballard. And Justin has invited us down here today to check out the new feature between Suzuki and Furuno called Fish Hunter. And to do that, we need a couple of Suzuki motors and a few other things. Let's show you how Fish Hunter works. The reason we are so excited to come down here and show you the Fish Hunter feature is what it can do for you and your boat. Previously, when you were using your autopilot and trying to maintain a heading, especially for fishing, you still had to control the throttles. But by using this new Fish Hunter feature, it controls the throttles for you. That's both forward, neutral, and reverse to keep your stern on the exact heading you want to keep it on for your different fishing modes. Let's talk closely about the three features. And for that, we're going to take a wide view and show you how these three features work. So the first feature of Fish Hunter we're going to talk about is Sabiki Lock. And what that means is we're going to face our stern to the wind and we're going to activate Sabiki Lock and it's going to keep us on that stern heading. It's not going to worry about our bow heading so much, but it's actually using, think of it in reverse, a heading from our stern. So we'll start by pressing the settings key, Sabiki Lock, and then we'll press enter. And now you're going to get a warning on the screen because this is actually very important. Once you enter Sabiki mode, it is going to control the throttles for you and it's just giving you a warning that that's what it's going to be doing. So before we enter that, we have to acknowledge that yes, okay, I know the throttles are going to be controlled for me. And now, as you see, we're now in Sabiki lock mode. Our stern is locked on a fixed heading and that's where we're going to stay. The next feature of Fish Hunter is point lock and that does exactly what it sounds like. When you turn point lock on, your boat is going to remain exactly where you put it. So let's go ahead and do that. We enter it the same way by hitting the settings button. We'll choose point lock and hit enter. And once again, we're going to get that warning. You're going to get that warning every time you enter one of these modes to let you know the throttles are being controlled for you. So we'll just go ahead and acknowledge it. And now, as you can see on the screen, we're now in point lock mode and we have a view of our throttles and what they're doing. Currently, we're in reverse. You see Justin's not touching the throttles and it's keeping us exactly where we set our point to be. And that's what point lock feature is used for. And the third feature of Fish Hunter is a feature called route smoothing. So what does that mean to you? It's actually a really cool feature in the fact that not only does it smooth your route as you're going through the corners, but most importantly, when you get to your route destination, it puts it in point lock for you. The boat will automatically decelerate, bring you to a nice controlled stop, and then sit there on that point and not move until you decide to go somewhere else. Really cool feature. So Justin, if we can get underway, let's take a look at how this works. We can choose our precision or economy mode, or we can even choose the hand steer. So for Justin's already on the helm, but we're gonna go ahead and put it in precision mode for him. It's gonna let us know, quick warning, that hey, when we get to the end of our destination, we're going to go into point lock mode and it's going to hold us in place at our destination. So we're just going to click OK and now we're on our way. And before you think we forgot about it, we didn't. So let's talk about safety because safety is paramount at Furuno. Anytime the boat is controlling your throttles automatically, we want to give you multiple ways to get out of those modes. So let's go into Sabiki lock mode. I'm going to show you how we can get out of it quickly. Okay, at any time, just like using your autopilot, you can press standby. That takes you out of any mode you're in. Right now we're in Sabiki lock mode, but say we don't have quick access to the autopilot, we can simply spin the wheel. You'll see the word safe helm come up. It will automatically go to standby after three seconds. There's another way too. So let's go back into Sabiki lock mode one more time. Okay, so we're back in Sabiki lock mode. Say there's a boat coming because, you know, we've been out here fishing for 20 minutes. There's always gonna be a boat coming, but we wanna get out of that mode quickly. We can simply tap the throttle and immediately we've deactivated the Sabiki lock mode. So multiple ways to get out of it to keep you safe. Um, turning the wheel, adjusting the throttle, or simply hitting the standby button on the NavPilot 300 will get you out of any one of these autopilot modes you're in. All right, Justin, now that we spent an awesome day out on your new boat, got to try out the Fish Hunter, what'd you think? Uh, it worked nice, I was very impressed. 
point lock held well, speaking mode makes a lot of sense. Um, they can be a very useful you know, tool to add to the tackle box there. Absolutely, that's awesome. So uh, how do you think it's going to help you fishing? Especially on the bottom fishing with the point lock. Um, we've got a lot of structures here off the Alabama coast. Um, you know, your red snapper, your grouper fishing, being able to just hold on the same spot. And it frees up the, the captain. You know, now I'm a, I can be a, a fisherman. <laughs> you know? No, I, I agree. That's absolutely really cool. And the other thing I like that I, you know, I didn't know before coming here was the, uh, you know, coming down to the point lock after at the end of a route. Right. So it was pretty cool to set your autopilot up with that, have the boat control its own speed as we slowed down and got to the destination, and then go right in the point lock mode. Right, we, we can go ahead and start getting tackle ready, and the boat's going to stop when it gets there. Okay, let's talk about adding the Fish Hunter Drive to your boat. Here's a quick list of everything you'll need. Starting out, you'll need Suzuki motors that are model year 2022 or newer. The Fish Hunter Drive can be used for boats having between one to six Suzuki outboards. You can confirm your Suzuki engine model year by the serial number tag found on the side of each Suzuki motor. Next up is a boat control module, also known as the BCM, and you'll need one for each Suzuki motor on your vessel. Each BCM must have one of the following part numbers to work with the Fish Hunter Drive. Note how the part numbers end in 98L. Your BCM part number must end in L01, L02, or L03 to work with the Fish Hunter Drive. And you can confirm your BCM part number by locating your BCM and reviewing the part number found on the front of each BCM module. Next up, you'll need a Suzuki Gateway for automatic throttle control while using the Fish Hunter Drive. The Suzuki Gateway must have one of the following part numbers. Notice how the part numbers end in 96L. If your Gateway ends in 96L11, you want to make sure to have that software updated to version 2 by your local Suzuki dealer for use with the Fish Hunter Drive. If your gateway part number ends in L12 or L13, you're good to go. And you can confirm your gateway part number by locating your gateway and reviewing the part number found on the front of the unit. Next up, you'll need a Furuno NavPilot 300 Autopilot with the newest software installed. You want to ensure the following software versions for use with the Fish Hunter Drive. A NavPilot 300 display must have version 1.11 software. A NavPilot 300 processor must have version 1.10 software. And if you're using the gesture controller, your GCU001 must have version 1.07 software. You'll need a Furuno heading sensor such as the PG700 electronic compass or an SCX20 satellite compass to provide Fish Hunter Drive with highly stabilized heading info. You'll also need a GPS sensor to provide position data. This could be done using Furuno's GP330B GPS antenna or the internal GPS of a Furuno TZT3MFD to provide the Fish Hunter Drive with GPS position. Keep in mind if you choose to use the SCX20 satellite compass, it will provide both heading and GPS to your system in one single unit, making installation that much easier. And finally, your boat can be set up with either hydraulic steering or electric steering. Fish Hunter Drive works perfectly with both. Now, for full control of your system, it's worth having one or more Furuno MFDs on board or any one of Suzuki's four SMDs that are available from your local Suzuki dealer. When using a Furuno MFD or Suzuki SMD in your system, you'll get full use of that gateway you installed earlier. That one single Suzuki gateway will provide your Furuno MFDs or Suzuki SMDs with information from up to six Suzuki outboards and four onboard tanks. So I'd like to say thank you from Furuno for letting us come down to your beautiful new boat. Uh, this Sea Lion 34 is really cool. Having the twin Suzuki 350s on it made it even better, especially for testing Fish Hunter. Thanks again for having us. Appreciate it. Thank you all for coming. All right, as you can see, boat's back in the slip. We just finished cleaning it up, and you know what that means for me, back to the Maryland office. Well, we want to thank you guys for coming for a ride with us on this brand new Sea Lion boat with twin Suzuki 350s to see how Fish Hunter works. We hope you enjoyed your time with us as we enjoyed our time down here in Orange Beach, Alabama, and we'll look forward to seeing you on the next video.